verses 13 through 14. Jesus Christ said, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way which leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Tonight you're in a line to go to a concert. The question I have for you tonight is which line will you be in on Judgment Day? Amen. You laugh now, but it won't be a laughing matter then. I'll say it again. In Matthew 7, 13 through 14, Jesus Christ said, Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way which leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. But narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. See, there's many people who will be on their way to destruction, and very few on their way to life. So let's, just, let's let you examine yourself tonight to see which line you're currently on if Judgment Day were to come into play right now. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10, it says, Do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, Yep, seems seem like a lot of you are on your way to hell right now. So how, how many... Man, y'all get out of this boat here. This is for bands. Y'all get out of here. I can be here wherever I want. It's public property, sir. You don't tell me where to go. All right, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to be right back. Whatever. Y'all can get out of our... Do you see this fucking bus? This trailer? This van? Public street. Get the fuck out of here. Nope. Get on the sidewalk. Public go street. Go the parking lot. Public street. Get out of here. Public street. You don't tell them what to do. Yeah, this is what sinners do when they hate God's word. They try to drown out God's word, but they don't actually deal with God's word. So as I was saying, the Bible makes it clear that drunkards and fornicators and potty mouths and liars and thieves and homosexuals and sodomites and fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. Go ahead. Go do what you got to do, man. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. Seems like I've come to the right place. Seems like I've come to the people who really need the truth. Who really need to forsake their sins and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus Christ said, repent or perish. There will be no lesbian kissing in hell. Man. There'll be no parties in hell. The party has been canceled due to the fire. Amen. And there's no sprinkler system to put the fire out, no fire hydrant, no fire truck, no fire extinguisher to put out the flames of hell. If sinners go there, they will be there forever. They will never exit out of hell. That's right. You know, if you were to go to a movie theater tonight and and if it were to catch on fire, you'd know where the exits are. If you were in an airplane, a crash, you would know where the exits are. Well, the only way to exit right now, the judgment and wrath of God, is right now. When it comes, it'll be too late. It'll be too late to follow Jesus then. That's why the scripture says, today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not the next day, but today is the day of salvation. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. The good news is that no matter how much sinning you've done, no matter how bad your sin is, God is willing and able to cleanse you of your sin, to pardon you of your sin, to forgive you of your sin, but you must repent. We need to move, man, because we've got to get this open. So as I was saying... I mean, like, on, on the other side over there. No, I'm not going over there. Sorry. Nice try. Yeah, so as I was saying, you need Jesus. 
right, that's fine. I'll get the cops. Get the cops. I don't care. I'm on public property. You revealed your true state. You weren't concerned about me and you opening that up. You don't want me to be here. That's all there is to it, you sinner. That's all there is to it. You're a sinner who hates God's word. There's no shortage of those kind of sinners in Fort Lauderdale today who just hate God's word. They love their sin. They don't want to repent. They don't want to even hear God's word because, you know, God's word testifies to you that you're on your way to hell. You won't be saying, it hurts my ears when you're in the concert tonight, will you? When it's blasting your eardrums into outer space. You won't be saying then, it hurts my ears. You won't be saying it then. You're saying it now because you don't like what I'm saying. That's right. That's why you're saying that. Well, guess what? Welcome to America. I can say things you don't like to hear. It's called freedom of speech. It's called freedom of religion. No, I'm not turning the volume down. I have no reason to turn the volume down. Am I really hurting your ears, sir? Yes. Okay, I'll turn it down. Is that better? Okay. There you go. But okay, okay. I, I turn it down. I'm trying to be kind to you. I'm not trying to just annoy you. I want you to hear God's word, sir. That's all. I even turn it down a little more. There you go. But I, I, I wonder if, if any of you will complain tonight when you're in a concert and it's blasting your eardrums into outer space, whether it's too loud or not. For some reason, I doubt it. I used to go to concerts. I used to go, go to concerts like Hootie and the Blowfish, or Boston, or Aerosmith, or you know, all these other filthy bands I used to listen to that I no longer listen to. Yeah, they're horrible. But uh, God wants you to have pure thoughts, and when you put filth in your ears, you're going to have bad thoughts. Amen. What's that? Pure filled thoughts? Well, if you want to have pure thoughts, sir, you must think upon pure things. I don't understand what you're saying, sir. Yeah, so the scripture wants you to meditate upon God's word. That's why I'm here to preach God's word to you tonight. The scripture says, meditate upon his law day and night that you may be careful to do everything that's written in it. I wonder how many of you in line tonight who are planning to get drunk, who are planning to lust, who are planning to fornicate. Well, a lot of you. I wonder how many of you are going to go to church on Sunday. And think you're, and think you're okay with God by doing that. I wonder how many of you will go to Mass tomorrow and think you're okay with God. You're going to go to Mass tomorrow, sir? You're a Roman Catholic? I was you're not a Roman Catholic. But you're going to Mass tomorrow. You're going to Roman Catholic? You're, okay. Well, I was raised a Roman Catholic, and it's not going to do you any good. Not going to do you any good. The Bible never tells you to go in a wooden box and tell your sins through a screen to another man. The Bible tells you to forsake your sins and confess your sins to God. That's what the Bible tells you to do. He that confesses his sins will find mercy. It says in 1 John 1.9. He who confesses his sins will find mercy. Proverbs 28.13 says, um, He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. So many people, because they're raised Roman Catholic here in America, like I was, they think if they go tell someone about their sins, that's confession. No, confession is not doing the sign of the cross on your chest and your head. That's not confession. That doesn't do you any good either. The Bible never doesn't tell you to do that either. But confession is agreeing with God about your sin. And if you agree with God about your sin, you'll stop your sinning because God hates your sin. And you ought to hate your sin because your sin is going to lead to your destruction. You know, the Bible says about Satan that he is the destroyer. He is a polyon. He is a badden. It says in Revelation. He is the destroyer. And the Bible says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You see, human beings are the crowning jewel of God's creation. You're made in His image. You're a greater, according to Scripture, you're a greater part of God's creation than all of outer space, everything we see in this world. You're made in His image. And because He cares for you so much and made you in that way and sent His Son just to die for you, the devil hates you to the same uh, point that God loves you and he wants to drag as many of you to hell with him just to spite God because he hates God and he wants to be God. He wants to be God over God which is completely impossible. 
But he, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to destroy your life. He wants to destroy you and send you and bring you to hell with him because he knows he's going there. There's no chance for him to get out of hell. So he wants to take as many of you as possible with him. That's the devil's plan. Well, God's plan... I'll just... I just have to turn it up again to be heard. He's not doing any good for anybody else. He's going to wear his horn out too. But as I was saying, God's plan on the other side is that you might be saved. He wants to take as many people as possible to his kingdom with him. And he does that through uh, telling you about his son dying for you on the cross and then giving you a chance to repent, allowing you to live to this point in your life to hear the gospel truth. You know, God does all these things for you because he's patient with you. I mean, God, think about it. God would have been just the very moment, the first time you sinned, to kill you right then and send you to hell. But because of his great mercy, because of his great compassion, he hasn't done that. Instead, he's being merciful towards you. He's allowing you to live, allowing you to hear the truth, allowing you to, you know, another chance to listen to your conscience, another chance to listen to God's word, another chance to listen to the conviction of the Holy Spirit, another chance to pick up the Bible and read it and obey it. He's given you all these chances to get right with him. Don't spurn those chances. Don't be apathetic towards God. Submit to God. Submit your life to him. Surrender your life to him. Your, your life is meaningless without God. It's just a cycle of sin, 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 and then you die. You know, most of you you're, look like you're a pretty young group for the most part. You know, most of you, you're probably at a working age, you're working, maybe you're married, maybe you're not. You have a good job, you're probably out of college by now, and you maybe you're married, and then you're going to have children, and then you're going to retire, and then you're going to have grandchildren, and then you're going to die. And so you, you go through this life, sir, if you'd listen for a second, you see I care for your soul. You go through your life, and, and uh, in the end you're going to die, you're not planning for it. Many of you, you plan, for, you plan for retirement, financial retirement, retirement from your job, but you don't, re, you don't plan for eternal retirement. Now I'm telling you, you're, you're being short-sighted. Very short-sighted in your plans. And so God, I'm here tonight to help you plan for eternal retirement. And you're going to spend eternity somewhere. You're going to spend eternity in God's kingdom because you're righteous and holy and you obey God's commandments and you've trusted in Jesus Christ as your Savior and you've become born again of the Holy Spirit. Or you're going to spend eternity in hell. The lake of fire, God's jail cell, where God sends those who refuse to repent, who refuse to live the way he tells them to, and they're rebels and criminals blah, in his blah, universe. Blah, 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 blah. Very reasonable. Fuck you. Very reasonable. That's all the sinners that, have is blah, blah, blah. Shouting at a crowd of people trying to have a nice time. Tell them the truth. You're a bullhorn. Yeah, tell them the truth. It's very reasonable. Hey, hey, sir. They want them to hear the truth. Yeah, it's very reasonable. If there was, listen, if that building was on fire there and you knew about it and someone didn't, I'm sure you'd be yelling at them too. Now, I'm not even yelling. I'm speaking at a regular tone of voice, just preaching through the bullhorn. Fuck you. Fuck you. God bless you. Oh, watch. Watch out. I'll get run over by a car, man. I want you to go to hell. So, yeah, he curses me. I bless him. It's like the scripture tells me to. Bless you. God bless you with repentance. God bless you with repentance. I hope you don't go to hell. Okay, well, you, you can't speak for everybody. You don't know everyone's thoughts and, and heart. Well, you can't speak for everybody either. You're only a few people. But listen, even if every single one of you hated me, I'd still preach to God because I love you. I care for you enough to tell you the truth. Uh, if I hated you like you hate me, I'd just walk away and say nothing to you. Well, no, it wouldn't be better for your eternity, ma'am. What's that? No, well, totally, this is not a democracy. God tells me to preach, I preach. He's the king of kings, not the president of presidents. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. He commands me through the great commission to preach this gospel. I don't take a vote on whether I should do it or not. I definitely let sinners vote on whether I should do it or not. I do what God commands me to do because I love him. And you ought to love God in that way too. 
And, and that's the, really the only way you can love God. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Well, do you love Jesus? Or are you a fornicator and a drunkard and a potty mouth? Do you love Jesus or are you a pot smoker? Do you love Jesus or are you a Roman Catholic? Do you love Jesus or are you just a hypocrite who claims to be a Christian? Are you a hypocrite or are you a lesbian? Yeah, are you a Christian? You, you can't be a lesbian Christian, that's for sure. Why is that so surprising to you? Why are you, oh, I mean, it's like I'm playing around or busting a joke on her. You, I mean, it's very common sense. The Bible's against that kind of stuff. It's just like the Bible's against liars. Nothing like a lying Christian either. No such thing as a fornicating Christian or a drunkard Christian. No such thing. So you're in the same boat as the lesbians if you're a drunkard, a liar, and a thief. No, there, there's plenty of Christians. See, your idea of Christianity is messed up. A Christian is someone who lives holy. A Christian is someone who obeys God. There's plenty of Christians in the world. There wouldn't be any Christians according to your definition of Christianity. It's amazing to me that people think Christianity is someone who has to be a sinner. They have to be sinning. If you're not sinning, you're not a Christian. Nonsense. If you're sinning, you're not a Christian. And Jesus came, you know, we talked about earlier how the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Well, Jesus came to destroy too. He came to destroy the works of the devil in your life. He wants to take all the sin out of your life. He wants to clean you up completely. He's a great physician. He has power to heal. And you're in need of healing, spiritual healing. Not because you have a sickness or disease, but because you choose to be a sinner. You're, you're, it's a self-inflicted wound. You're using your free will wrongly. And if, you're, if you claim to be a Christian and you're here tonight, I have some scripture for you. Found in 1 Corinthians, or sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says, Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch the unclean thing and I'll receive you, says the Lord Almighty. You'll be my son and daughter and I'll be your father. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness and the fear of God. So God commands you to come out from among them. Right before that, in 2 Corinthians 6, it says, What fellowship does light have with darkness? And in John 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If you're following Jesus, you have the light of life. You're not going to walk in darkness. You're going to walk in the light. And what fellowship does light have with darkness? Zero. The light comes out, the darkness flees. Dark comes out, the light goes away. That's what happens. And so if you claim to be a Christian, you'll walk in the light as he's in the light. Because you have no fellowship with unrighteousness, with sin, with darkness. So there's many people, especially in America, who think they're Christians because they sit a sinner's prayer. They go to a building on Sunday or Saturday. They were raised a certain way. That's not so. A Christian is someone who follows Christ, who obeys Christ, who keeps his commandments. If you're not doing that, don't delude yourself. Don't fool yourself. You're not a Christian. But God's desire, according to 2 Peter 3, is that God is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants you to come to repentance. What is repentance? Going the other direction. If you're a drunkard, you'd be sober. If you're a liar, you'd be honest. If you're a thief, you'd be content. If you're a fornicator, you'd be pure. If you're a lesbian, you straighten out. That's what the scriptures teach about repentance. Jesus said it one time like this, or actually two different times. Go and sin no more. So Jesus commands you to do. You know, follow Jesus. Jesus is worthy of your obedience, worthy of your, your adoration, worthy of your time and your affection. Some, uh, some band or some singer is not worthy of those things. Jesus is worthy of those things. No band member, no singer died for you on the cross. Jesus died for you on the cross. No band member, no singer can offer you eternal life. Jesus Christ can offer you eternal life. What did you say, sir? What's that, sir? Jesus what? He woke back up. He woke back up. 
Well, he rose from the grave three days later, but he still died. He was dead and in a grave. But I don't think you understand what death is, sir. We're talking about physical death, not spiritual death, not dying like annihilationism. You're going to die someday, but you're going to live on somewhere, either in hell or in God's kingdom. That's your choice, sir. I, I'd rather you go to the latter, not the former. I don't want you to go to hell. You know, I used to be a, a potty mouth, a liar, or a thief, a fornicator, or a drunkard, a very violent man, like that man who walked by the blah, blah man I walked by earlier. I was a lot like him, but Christ changed me. 19 years ago. So don't think you're beyond saving. Don't think you're beyond help. God saves to the uttermost. God can change the uttermost. God can deliver you. He is the deliverer of deliverers. And he can take you out of the muck and mire of sin and set you upon the solid rock where you obey him and keep his commandments. You know, it's amazing that even though you sin against God day in and day out. You're going to go to hell. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. I have no plans on going there. Why do you say that? God doesn't love you. Why do you say that? Because you're evil. Well, are you evil? You're evil. Are you evil? No. I'm awesome. Oh, yeah. So your, your definition of evil is, is, is wrong. Your definition of evil is I don't like you. No, I'm looking at evil right now. Uh, how, you're else. how do you know that? Because you're evil. How do you know? Because. How do you know? You got horns and you're all red. I have horns and I, so if anyone has horns and they're red, they're evil? I don't have horns and I'm not red. God bless you. Yeah, well, that's nice. I'm still going to preach anyway. Yeah, so, you know, Noah was a preacher of righteousness for 100 years, and you know how many got in the boat? Eight. God told Ezekiel and Jeremiah, go preach this rebellion, this, uh, rebellious and stubborn house, and they won't hear you, they won't repent. They did it anyway, no one repented. And so my, my primary purpose of being here is not you repenting. I'd like for all of you to repent. My primary purpose of being here is for the glory of God and to obedience to his commandments. Amen. That's why. Hey, listen, if you want to repent, you can repent. Get along with God. Cry out to God. Humble yourself and cry out to God. The scripture says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of God and he will lift you up. See, God opposes the proud. God's against the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You have to humble yourself. Many of you are not willing to humble yourself. You want to be stuck in your pride. But pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be before your destruction. But if you humble yourself, you can have mercy. If you humble yourself, you can have grace. If you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. And God takes no delight in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn and live. God wants you to turn and live. He doesn't want you to stay on your same path and go to hell. He wants you to turn and live. He wants you to forsake your beer guzzling, your drunkenness, your immodest dress, your, your sex outside of marriage, your lust, your porn watching, your filthy mouth. God wants you to turn from all of that. I know it kind of seems unbelievable right now because many of you, you're involved in all the things I just listed off. But God can deliver. Christ can deliver. The same power that rose Jesus in the grave can deliver you and change you and make you different. Make you to who God wants you to be. Instead of who your friends want you to be, who you want to be, who your parents want you to be, who God wants you to be. That's really all that matters in the end. Because God is your creator, and what he wants for you, what he thinks you should be, is all that really matters. Not what someone else says, not what your peers say, not what your, your friends say, but what Jesus says. You know, Jesus is the friend of friends. If I were to describe to you two friends, one tells you the truth no matter what, uh, he's always bluntly honest with you. He cares for you. He shows that he's there for you when you need him. And then the other person is a friend who doesn't really care much for you. He's always leaking in trouble, always getting you in trouble, always leading you to the wrong thing. Who would you say is really your friend? The first one, of course. And what I just described is Jesus and the devil. Jesus really cares for you. He wants what is best for you. He wants you to have eternal life. The devil, he hates you. He wants you to go to sin. He wants you to keep on sinning. He wants you to go to hell. He wants you to go to destruction. He doesn't care about how much trouble you get in. He doesn't care about anything like that. All he cares about is bringing you to hell with him. So it's your choice today. 
Choose this day whom you will serve. Follow Christ. Don't follow the devil. He who sins of the devil. Oh, sir. He who sins of the devil, but Jesus Christ. Behind that wheel and getting into a car accident, 
Because your judgment, your sentence is impaired. Are you sowing for fornication? Wow. Won't be any screaming, won't be any turning down. Just torment, weeping, and gnashing of teeth. Where the worm does not die, and the fire is not quenched. Yes, Jesus Christ was a hell fire preacher. Jesus Christ is not this Jesus that you painted in your mind, America. It's not this Jesus with the blonde hair and blue eyes. The one who doesn't care about your sin. The one who pats you on the back and says, it's okay. That's not the Jesus of the Bible. That's the Jesus that people have painted in their heads to suit their lifestyle. But it's not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of the Bible commands you to repent. The Jesus of the Bible commands you to pluck out your eye if your eye causes you to sin. Jesus Christ of the Bible, the Holy Scripture, tells you to cut your hand off if your hand is causing you to sin. To cast your leg away from you if your leg is leading you in the wrong direction. And most of you, you wouldn't be having any legs by the end of this day because you're walking in these clubs, you're walking in these bars to get drunk, to get wasted, to get high, to lust, to fornicate, to chase the woman. That's why you're here. Yeah, the Bible says, cut off your leg and pass it away from you if your leg causes you to sin. You need to take drastic measures to take the sin out of your life. What's the problem, sir? Do you have a problem with the Word of God? Well, God has a problem with you getting drunk. Why don't you give up your sins? Why don't you follow Jesus Christ? The Bible says in Matthew, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, the Bible says, Go and learn what this means. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Are you a sinner today? Well, God is calling you to repentance. Because he doesn't want you to perish and die in your sin. The Bible says that God takes no delight in the death of the wicked. But that the wicked Probably the, the cops. will turn and live. Probably call the cops. God wants you to do. He wants you to turn from your sin and live for him. The Bible also says that Christ died for all, not some people, but that Christ died for all, that all those who live, you're living physically, even though you're spiritually dead, that they should no longer live for themselves, but for Jesus Christ who died and rose again for them. Jesus Christ didn't die on the cross so that you can remain a sinner. Jesus Christ didn't die on the cross so that you can continue to live in sin. Jesus Christ died that he might free you from the guilt, the condemnation, and the permitting of sin. Jesus Christ didn't just come to save you from hell fire. He came to save you out of your sin. He was manifested in the flesh as God being the image of the invisible God to destroy the works of the devil in your life. Will you let God, will you let Jesus Christ, will you allow the Holy Spirit to destroy the works of the devil in your life? The way you dress, you wear tight clothing to reveal your clothes and your body parts that only your husband should see. Because you want men to lust after you, you get dressed, you look in the mirror, and you say, well, I can get that guy to lust after me today. I can get that guy to try to get my number. That's what you women think. But God sees your thoughts. God sees your mind. And God is going to require you to give it an account for the way you think. The Bible says, set your mind to things that are above. Things that are true. Things that are noble. Things that are excellent. Things that are praiseworthy, things that are good report, things that are holy, things that are just, things that are perfect. Are you thinking about those things today? 
Or are you thinking about watching porn? Are you thinking about going home and fornicating with your boyfriend or with your girlfriend? What are you thinking about today? Well, you need to think about the Word of God. You need to think about where you're going to spend your life for eternity. That's what you need to be thinking about. Not about what vacation trip you're going to take next year. You know, they, you don't need to be worried about those things. You need to be worried about your soul. The Bible says, what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul in the end? Where will it profit you to smoke on your cigarettes, to store your lungs and lose your soul in the end? What would it profit you to flip on your butt dumber, your low middle, low light, and perish for all eternity in the lake of fire. What is it going to profit you to sin, sin, sin? And for God to say to you on judgment day, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Yeah. Ask yourself this question. Does God know you? Ask yourself this question. Do you know God? You may know about God. That Jesus was born in Bethlehem, that he was a baby in a manger, but that's not enough to save you. No, you need to repent. You need to go home and repent. Forsake your sins. Follow Jesus Christ. Yeah, the Bible says in John 17, 3, the Bible says that this is eternal life. Knowing the only true God, God the Father, and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Yes, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe it on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, I'm not talking about some belief that's just intellectual. I'm not talking about a belief that you just store up in your mind. I'm talking about a belief from the heart, a true and pure honest heart, a broken heart that leads to righteousness. A belief that leads to good works. A belief that will lead to obedience. That's the belief that God wants. That's the faith that God requires you to have. So the Bible says in James chapter 2, You believe that there is one God, you do well. For even the demons believe and they tremble. It's not enough just to believe in God. Oh, I, I believe he exists. It's not enough. It's not going to take you to heaven. You must stop your sinning. You must forsake your sins. Jesus Christ is coming back for a perfect and spotless and blameless God. He's not coming back to marry a church or a wife that has her garments defiled. No way. Yes. Will you forsake your sins? Will you trust in the Lamb of God who came to take away the sin of this world? Make his path straight. Make your path straight so that you can draw near to God and that he can draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning. Let your joy be turned into gloom. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up. What is humility? What is humbleness? Well, it's looking at yourself and seeing that you're depraved. Seeing that you're wrecked. Seeing that you're blind. Seeing that you're lost. Seeing that you're in need of a savior. Seeing that you're in desperate need of help. Seeing that you're in desperate need of forgiveness. That's humility. That's what we call humbleness. You need to repent. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and He will lift you up. Yes, the Bible says when pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble, there is wisdom. If you're humble, then you become wise. When you're humble, that's when you fear God. Are you going to fear God? That's what we need in America. We need a little bit more fear of God in this place. 
But as the Apostle Paul said, there is no fear of God before their eyes. No fear of God before their eyes. How do I know you don't fear God? Because you're watching porn. Because you're masturbating. You're being a homosexual in a sodomite and a lesbian. That's how I know for a fact that you do not fear God. You can, uh, we have no problems without you exercising your freedom of speech, but you can't use a megaphone. It violates city ordinance and you have to get a permit for it. I know you've already been advised before that many times. I know you were even told today that. So you need to put the megaphone away, but you're free to stay out here and exercise no, your freedom no, actually, of Actually, what we found out is we did need a permit. Okay. No, we don't need a permit. What we need is uh, a decibel level meter. But they said they were going to do down at Fort okay. Lauderdale Beach, and they can measure from there. And if we're if we're above, we'll turn down. Fort Lauderdale Beach, you're downtown. It's okay. a different area. Okay, but it's still the same rules. Okay, so you get, it, turn off your amplified speech, but you can stay out here and talk all you want. Where, where what ordinance is this, sir? So we have to have it's a permit. City ordinance. Okay, what, what which one is it? It's city ordinance. All right, I'm not going to get an argument with you. I'm I not arguing. Filming and all that. I'm asking a question, so, sir. I'm not arguing. I'm giving you the opposite. I'm giving you the opportunity to, to turn on the amplified music. If I have to come back, I will come Obviously back we're with an to be reasonable. Okay. Okay. And I'm being yeah, reasonable with you. I'm told you can stay. It's not, it's not music, right. it's speech. No, it's amplified sound. You cannot sit here with amplified sound. It's freedom of speech, sir. Huh? It is freedom I'm of speech. I'm not stopping your freedom of speech because I didn't tell him to leave. I just told him you can't use the bullhorn. Right, but there's... You could stay here all, all he wants and exercise the freedom of speech. But you can't be heard because all... Be use it with but we can't be heard because of all the noise. Okay, well... So how is that freedom of speech if we can't be heard? It's your freedom of speech to sit here. If you want Where there's nobody. Okay. We're telling you well, what the rules I'm, are. The rules I'm telling you what the rules are. I'm not you telling you to leave. Talk with your voice. If you choose, you cannot use the amplifier. So, Officer Stanger, and what's your name, sir? Officer Brinton. Officer Brinton. Yeah. And you're, you're telling and us I that we... I know you were told this earlier on the beach, because no, I already talked No, sir. You. Well, we were told. Okay. I'll, I'll explain it to you again what we were told. Okay. We were told that they were going to get a decibel meter, and they were going to take the level of sound we were using, and we would be obedient to what the decibel said. If we're above the, the meter, we will go down. We have no problem with obeying okay, the law. So do you want me to get a decibel meter sure. and come here and stand here and tell you what, what well, decibel to lower well, down to? Well, what, what, what I'm usually, trying to be reasonable. No, I'm, I'm saying, trying to be reasonable too, sir. I'm not telling you to leave. You can talk well, all I'm you not want. Well, I'm not saying you are, but, I, but, we, want, amplified but sound. we want our message to be heard, sir. So if we're above the decibel, we will lower it. We, we're not okay, unlawful and the, citizens. And the ordinance actually do, is not specific with decibel meter in this particular area. We are doing that. So furthermore, that is further on top just to help you guys. Than it should be, but it doesn't even state that. Okay, it states no amplified sound. Each one at of all. these bars with music, yeah. they have to have city permits to play music outside or, or mostly inside. If they're playing it inside, they have the permit. It has to stay within the confines of the business. If they're playing music outside, they have to have a permit to play it outside. Okay, that's the perm. What we're talking right. about with permits. But when, what, what I was explaining to the officers earlier, I talked to like four or five different officers okay. earlier. So what I was explaining to them earlier is that. Uh, sound is different than speech. Speech is, is has a right to be heard. Sound doesn't. So it's not. This is not noise. This is speech. It's amplified sound. Right. Speech. It's amplified sound, sir. But you don't understand the difference between so the, the two things. So if you want to sit here and talk without the megaphone, that's fine. Uh, okay. But the okay. Second, you go through the Let's, amplification. It's a violation of the city ordinance. Okay. So that's just. What and it the city ordinance says that we can't have amplified uh, speech amplified at all. Sound. Doesn't matter if it's speech. Music, somebody talking over the, in the radio or speaking into a into a microphone is speech. No, that's Whether the same it's thing. Singing, okay, we're not going to argue this, well, okay, sir. So, so, so let me, can you tell me where I get the permit from, sir? Uh, if, if you're you telling me we need a permit, okay, but where, what, what part it's of the city? City Hall. city Hall. We can go there tomorrow and get a well, permit? Well, tomorrow's uh, Saturday, so you're not going to be able to do it tomorrow. you got to go down on Monday through normal business hours. Okay. Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Mm -hmm. Today's a holiday. You wouldn't have been able to go there today anyway because it's veterans day most, most cities i go to sir there's a there's an exception for a speech because it's the first amendment yeah i'm not stopping him from speech no no i'm talking about amplification that, that's not not do, not the way it is you can sit here and you want to scream over your lungs and do that that's fine the second you use amplification it's a violation of the city ordinance okay so so if if we if we're louder with our normal voice then that is amplified we're still okay you hear all these other people here that are loud and making noise and that's 
Yeah. You know, it's the, the way it is. But the second you go through amplification, if a business is playing loud music, do an amplification or singing, we tell them the same thing. Turn the music down or bring it below to what your permit levels are allowed. Okay, so if we go back to the beach, we're under a different regulation then. I, I listen. We're not going to argue. We're not going to argue this. I'm not arguing. I just asked a question, sir. Right. I just asked a question. I'm so not arguing. The next thing we can do is, if you want to continue, and I continue getting complaints because I've gotten complaints from businesses already that you're okay. causing disturbance, then we'll deal with the disturbance route. But we're not because we understand you have the right to exercise your freedom of speech. All I've I already gotten complaints from several businesses. Sure, I don't mind complaints. They're bothering people. I don't mind complaints. I mean, okay. people can be bothered. It's not a big deal. People are bothered by. You have the right. I'm bothered by what they're doing too. Freedom of speech. But my, my only question, I'm not, I'm not arguing, sir. I just have a question. Okay. If I go back to the beach, I can go back to using amplified sound. Is what I'm asking. You, you weren't allowed to use amplified sound earlier. That's not what I told us. I know us. the officers told you that. No, I didn't, sir. You I didn't. talked we to the officers, though. Sir. Okay, video. I know you have video. Right, and, and we, have, right. we have them on video telling them that. And they that said is. to keep it down below a decibel meter. If you want them to go out there with a decibel meter and put it onto there, being amplified where you are, you're going to be in violation of the ordinance. We're giving you the break of not doing it. Right? Okay. I, can go get an, uh, I can go get a sound meter right now and come back. But, but I'm just, I'm just confused. I'm giving you the courtesy. Okay, not we're, we're not going to use it, sir. We're not using it right now. But I'm just confused. Sit here and talk I'm just, I'm just confused, sir, because well, at, at the beach they said if it's as long as it's below a certain decibel level, we're allowed to do it without a permit. That's what they I'll told tell us. I'll you right now, if you're through, amplified through that, you're above any decibel level that you're allowed with amplified music, with amplified speech, because it's amplified sound. So, so is it, is it, is it a noise no, level? I don't even need by the ordinance. I don't even need to bring out a, a sound meter. Okay, so it's not a noise level then. It's just the permit, just, it's just the, the thing itself. It's the amplification of sound. That's what they told us earlier. That's why I'm confused, sir. They didn't tell us okay. that earlier. They told us that. Uh, and so, We're done here. sir, I'm not I'm arguing here, with you. I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm not gonna sit here all day and go over the same thing. Sit here. You could stand here, talk all you want with your, you know, your rights. That's your rights. But just don't use the amplification. So we would get arrested if we use it. You could be cited for it. Yeah, you could be cited for the city ordinance. And then you would have to go in front of the city attorney for it. For a ticket? For a citation, yeah. It would be a notice to appear in violation of the city ordinance because it's a city ordinance. And it would be for amplified, amplified sound. But it's different at the beach. I don't... This is not the beach, sir. No, I know it's, it's not. That's why I'm asking. Because earlier you said this... the beach, sir. Well, I know, but you're an officer, so I figured you would know. Talked to you earlier. Yeah, we talked to but several officers earlier. We talked okay, to a lieutenant, we know. talked to a sergeant, okay. we talked to several other that don't have rank at all. And so we dealt with it several times, okay. and no one told us at the end of the day we have to put away. They kept, they went back and got a desk for me, and I told them, listen, by the time you come back with it, I'm going to be gone. Okay. They came back with it, I was gone within 15 minutes. Because well, so earlier you did say that um, it's different. You say you're, you're, on, you're in downtown. There's, there's several areas in the city. There's downtown, which is downtown entertainment district. Then there's the beach, which is a beach entertainment district. Right. Right? This is a downtown entertainment district. So there's different rules for different sections. Yeah, because it has to do with there's liquor licenses and there's the businesses. Like businesses have to have certain permits for certain type of music. Right. Whether the music's outside, which you notice that I'm gonna have music outside. Yeah, and there's there's um businesses too at the beach. Yes, yeah, but yeah, they yeah. have permits for that. Right. So they have permits to be outside to have their music. And they have to have permits for it. And then the other thing I was saying is we, we were getting complaints. And if we have to get complaints, then we'll do, it becomes a disturbance. But I understand you have the right to exercise your freedom of speech. And I'm not stopping you. I could care less. You have that right. Yeah. And just because a person complains that you're saying things they don't like, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But when it becomes an issue where several people are calling and it becomes a disturbance, then we have to deal with it accordingly. Right. But and, and dealing with it accordingly could be asking you guys to move somewhere else. Or not use the amplification of music, or go to another, you know, go to another area. But we don't. I don't want to have to get to that point. Well, that's actually not. That's I'm not going you off there. It's not accurate that you can make us leave. If someone doesn't like what we're saying, that's what free speech if, if is. You're, yes, but if you're causing a disturbance and it's disturbing well, several people and we're getting complaints, I'm disturbed by all of them. I'm okay. disturbed by all of their sin. Okay. Right now, and so, so is this he. This is a public area, and they have so the right to come. And I have the right want. to freedom of speech, whether they're disturbed or not. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Even right. if like the hundred people are disturbed, you, you couldn't tell me to leave. Into confrontations with people. Oh, I'm not confrontational. No. No, just words, sir. I only know 
We don't even we don't use fighting words. We just preach the Bible. But I only know when you when when I get a complaint over nine one one. You have to go look at it. I, I only get one half of the story. Sure. Right. I have no problem with you looking into right. it. I'm just I'm just saying you can't make right. me move because I'm preaching the Bible. I didn't and people, say he had to. No, I didn't say you did. I'm just saying that if, if someone's disturbed by it, even if it's a hundred people, you can't tell me I have to leave because a hundred people are disturbed. No. That's freedom of speech. So that's it's for disturbing speech. I mean, if, was, if, if freedom of speech only covered speech that everybody liked, it wouldn't be freedom of speech. So if you want to stay here and, and voice your opinion, that's perfectly fine. So it's not with Amplified, amplified Sound. So, so, we'll so the officer earlier told us that the name of the ordinance, lieutenant we talked to, told us the number. I couldn't remember the number. It was 17.7 or something like that. Do, do you remember? What, do you know what it is? I can look it up if you want. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm just trying to be educated. That's all. I don't live around here. He does. So it's, okay. we just want to know what the facts are. You know, the best thing I, I usually try to do is resolve it without even having to go into citing ordinances and going into citing. Right? No, we're not. We're not. We're not doing because we're questioning what your knowledge is. We're doing because we want to know for our own. And so, because we we're law-abiding citizens, okay. we're lawful. We're not trying to be unlawful or cause problems. People, we're we're trying to do what is right. And so, if you have if you have an orange, we like to look at it. Okay. And if there's a permit, we I mean, is a permit costing to get or that just? I don't know. That's oh, okay. a city hall thing. That's something outside of what I do. Okay. So let me go. I'll I'll go and make contact with the lieutenant because I already talked to him. I'll get a copy of the ordinance. Okay. And I'll bring the ordinance back. Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you, sir. All right. You know what we should do? We should actually talk to the supervisor. That's what we should do. Why don't you, you want to go ask him that? I'm going to look up municode.com. Well, he's a sergeant. The supervisor is usually a lieutenant. I mean, they may, they may say the same thing. Maybe. Well, they might, but I want to, I want to make sure. Because, you know, sometimes these, these guys who have only been on there a long time, they don't know what they're talking about. And that's just protocol to ask them. To the one who's in charge, you feel like they can talk to the one who's can we just talk to your supervisor? That's all. Just ask if we can talk to your supervisor. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm just trying out. I'm going on Municode.com right now. You're going on what? Municode.com. Okay. That, that's where the lieutenant told me to go earlier today. Okay. And and trying to find out where these these ordinances are because it's I'm getting conflicting information from the lieutenant earlier today and from what you guys are telling me now. Yes, sir. Okay, let me search here. I believe that officer is going to get you a copy of the ordinance as it's written. Okay. So there's no gray area for you, but you might be able to find it on that app. I'm not sure. You're a supervisor on duty tonight? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Okay, here's some exemptions. I knew there'd be exemptions. There always are. Oh, yeah, there's always some. And so I, I, think, I think religion is probably one of the exemptions. I'm going to look here. I'm not sure because I know we had, and I'm, I'm not even going to pretend that I can speak intelligently on the. Okay. On the, uh, three, three, I'm sorry, what? No, 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 I'm just out here with people. Sound level measurement. Maximum permissible de decibel level. Are you finding your voice doesn't carry enough? You need the thing. Oh no! It's all the noise you hear. We're just we're just trying to overcome the noise. I mean, if if you were to stand here for a while, I know that guy called and complained, but if you were to stand for a while and I zoomed in on the people who are listening, they're barely even paying attention at the level we were at, and we were using an amplifier. So we're not we're not trying to cause problems. That guy's probably complaining we're ruining his business or whatever. But people are still coming in at his business just fine. Well, yeah, I, I'll tell you straight out because I received a couple calls. Yeah. Um, it's it's not just the businesses. Sometimes the people feel uncomfortable, and so yeah. then they sit there. You know, they they come down to have their drinks or do whatever they want to do. They don't want to feel bad about it. Excuse me, one moment. Sure. Go ahead, Jeff.
Yeah, so it's right here. 24 hours, 65 decibels is what it says. Nothing about a permit. Okay. Yeah. I, I have to drive by there in a little while, so I'm going to put a kid on the camera. Yeah. It says right here in commercial areas there's a, there's a sound limit. It doesn't say I have to have a permit. I'm looking at it right now. Which is what the people told us earlier today. And typically the way it works in downtown area, like a commercial area like this, is you have to take the ambient level and then I have to rise it above that level a certain amount to, to be in violation because I'm raising, I have, I'm trying to overcome the ambient level. Right, I get that, but you know we don't allow any of these bars to have amplified sound outside either. Right, but let me, let me just show you. I can show you right here where it says. I'll get a copy of the rule. Okay. I'll, look at, I'll look at your phone. Yeah. It's mine, but I don't know this website. Okay, or... specific restrictions. This okay. is Municode.com. This is given the, the section 17.7. I think that's what the guy said earlier today, 17.7. Okay. And so amplified sound. And so there's restrictions. No person shall cause, allow, or permit the operation of any amplified sound device from the following use districts or locations in the following manner. Am I valid? Yeah, go ahead. Just, uh, there's uh, residential. If you scroll up, there'll be commercial. Okay. They're very commercial right here. That's not residential. I agree. I obviously wouldn't go in front of someone's house and do this. No, that's nice. Commercial mixed use, I agree that's where we're at. Yep. For sound, it goes into animals and stuff. Yeah, that's that's it. Okay. So, I have no idea what your decibel level of that thing is. I mean, I don't know but what it, it is either. It's pretty cut and dry. But I'm willing, I'm willing to be measured, and if we're above it, we'll go below it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're well, we're law-abiding citizens. Uh, that's pretty reasonable. I can't uh, can't argue that. I mean, it is what it is. Amplified sound. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Sound should be playing the auto for a period of one minute longer. Just Okay, we're not between 10 and 7. That's right. residential, so I scrolled too far back up. Residential, residential. The way I read it, as long as you're under 60 decibels and under 55 when after 10 p.m., right. you should be okay. I don't walk around with a decibel meter. Right, and I, I'm, you know, we're, we're willing to be reasonable. We're not, looking. We, we, if we were pointing it that way into his, into his door, we won't do that. We'll Let point it. Is, is, uh, oh, you got a print of the ordinance, sir. That's what I was just looking at. You printed right up here. That's what I was just looking at, same thing. Same thing? Exact same thing. Okay, so it's a decibel. It's a matter of But it's from five feet away. Okay, well, I don't have a problem so. with that. I was explaining to him that uh, we're not looking to point it into into the business's door to you know ruin their customers. If you were posted up outside of like the garage there, would that serve your purpose, or do you need to be? Well, I want to be where the people are. I, I mean, yeah, I, people all park there and walk through. Yeah, I'm but just asking. Yeah, I know, I know. Like a half I know you're trying here. to make this little trouble as possible, but well, yeah, I, I, mean, I think right here, if we I point don't it, anything wrong with what you're doing per yeah. se. Uh -huh. However, when we're receiving citizen complaints, we got to handle them. Sure. And citizens so like going to the bar. You know, depending on the message, they don't want to feel bad about going to the bar. Yeah. Maybe they are here to get drunk and have yeah. sex and do all that good stuff. Well, that's also their right. Sure. You know? I mean, I'm not stopping them. I I'm agree. just trying to influence them to not do that. I and it's it. not a sin to make, it's not a, you're not breaking the law to make someone feel bad. I get it. So, we, we, we'll, 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 we'll do our best. Don't make on the feel bad over 60 decibels. Okay. We're good. <laughs> and you know, it says five feet away, so really what we're standing right now is five feet. Okay, well, I mean, I don't have a problem with you guys measuring it. We're going to try to be as reasonable. To measure. The five feet rule is a lot easier to measure. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can have him stand right here and be like, hey, can you hear me? And if he goes, no, then you're good. 
But if he says yes, you're not good. You mean 60 decibels five feet away? Yeah. Yeah. But standing where I'm at right now through that If you measured it, yeah. It's probably going to end up being clearly and over 60. Okay, well. What it was before yeah. when I turned my car down the street from the next block. Yeah, I, heard, clearly I heard it and that's why. I okay, well, we'll turn it down. If, you, if you'd like to test it though, I'm sure you have a smartphone. Yeah. Um, probably not. They all have apps yeah. for the sound meters. Now they're not they're not calibrated to the point that we can right. force with it. Like we can't stand out here with the app and stroke it's you better. a citation. So probably like five below would probably However, be safe. However, it's pretty doggone accurate. Yeah, okay. Because we used to use them for when, uh, what's the name, Vibe? Oh yeah, when the Vibe, Vibe used to crank it way too loud and the residents over there would complain. Oh. And before we called out code with their real little sound meters and all that crap, mm -hmm. we'd use the app and it was almost dead on. We just can't enforce off an, off an app. Right. But if you want to be in compliance so you can do what you want to do, yeah. that'd be a good way to test it. Get the app, download. It's pretty doggone accurate. Okay. I'd say it's within the decimal. Okay. All right. You just want to test it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll test it. We're we'll, not busting your chops, man. We're, sure. No, I understand. Uh, I'm not trying to make your job more difficult than it is. Unfortunately, if we bring out the meter, they're going to expect us to well, I'm, like I said, we're, we're going to probably go like yeah, 55. No. we got to call out code with their meter, then there will be enforcement. Yeah. I mean, honestly, worst case scenario, you're looking to notice the fear. Yeah. Unless you fail to stop then, then you'd be arrested. But, I mean, we're not, we're not trying yeah. to do that. That's not the route we're trying to sure. do. Sure. Okay. So you're not hurting anybody. Yeah. Yeah, we, we're not trying to encourage any kind of problems or any violence or anything like that. We're just here to preach the Word of God. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Well, a lot worse things you'd be saying. So. Okay. Well, thank you, Sergeant. Thank you, officers. I appreciate right. it. Okay. Yep. Okay, look, let me, uh, okay, so we're on Thursday, but from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m., so now I exceed 85 or 95 decibels. From 2 a.m. to 12 p.m., it's 65. So we're actually at, at 85. Right. Let me just make sure. Hey, sorry, I just want to make sure. The, this, the 65 was between 2 a.m. and 12 p.m. You so got to look, uh, there's difference. Today is a Friday and then a holiday, which is on the further bottom. Oh, okay. That's so Because today is a holiday. It's a federal holiday. Okay. So that's 65. Time, time period. Okay, so I see it now. Uh, between certain time to certain time. Okay. All right, Please, thank you. Now you got it, man. You're yeah. Crap. And that's yeah. the thing. I think the ordinance number is on the top right there. Yeah. It's a full audio city noise Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So brother, you, you need to keep this man. Yeah. You need to have this on you at all times when you're when you're preaching down here. Put it somewhere. And I I, I pull up the same exact thing on my app, on my phone. Wow. At Municode.com. Munico, yeah, I've been on that. Me and Rich have been on there before. So now you know, man. We've talked to cops, we've had an establishment establish with them. Let me get it, let me get that app on my phone. Yeah.